have this whole unit with one of the plasma cutters for around 400 bucks. If you have a compatible plasma Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are dealing with none other than Mr. JD himself. And we've opened this video up with an email that I've received because I always receive them after I do a video on this gentleman. This guy claimed to have spent already $900 and Mr. JD, of course, is telling you what the opening price points are and they fluctuate, you know, depending upon what you buy for this particular chassis. Now, of course, this video he's talking about is on YouTube. I had to re-edit this video in full because, of course, he decides to add a lot of audio to it, which is fine. We'll do it right. And you guys can see here how many views this video has already pulled, how many likes, and of course what Mr. JD himself is claiming. Let's go over the video. Plasma cutter already. You can do this build, do it at a starting point of just over 250 bucks for the CNC machine. The machine is based off of 20 by 40 aluminum extrusion that comes pre-cut to length. Mr. JD, my question has never changed. If you're using an anodized aluminum extrusion for the chassis, all of your users can now see the truth. You cannot ground anything that's anodized because anodization as a coating is an insulator, which means it does not conduct electricity, sir. Fact. Hey guys, jump over to eDealers Direct Automation and check out my eBay store for the components used to make what you see in this video, as well as many others that you may not even realize you need. Of course, I'm always there if you have questions, message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And of course, I do do custom engineering as well as consultations. Thank you for watching this video and your support. Take care. There's also holes drilled in the end that are the proper size holes to run a tap down. So but tapping is required on some of these extrusions. As far as the electron. Well, we see here Mr. JD selection once again on the incorrect USB controller. Now what's interesting, and many of you already know from past videos, this is the same type of controller used in all of his builds. Once again, it's the most attractive part of the build because this is what reduces the overall price to virtually nothing. The thing to keep in mind is Universal Serial Bus has been proven many times on my channel to be completely incompatible with CNC production robots. Why is that? Universal Serial Bus has never been nor will ever be suitable due to the fact of all of the variables for stability that it has built into it. That incorporates voltage spikes, lack of possible grounding, and also dealing with large amounts of electromagnetic interference, regardless of what high frequency plasma cutter or if you use one, it still will lead to the potential of a highly unstable production robot. Now the term hobbyist comes up all the time in my industry. I hear it thrown around consistently and used absolutely incorrectly the true word is scale this is the word that many of you don't want to talk about because what you're really talking about when we say we're downsizing from a full-scale machine down to a smaller scale machine is just the workable capacity as far as work constraints that that machine has now I want you to think clearly exactly about what I'm saying if a machine is able to produce a large part or a machine is able to produce a small part the one thing all end users Users, be it professional grade, be it small scale, high scale, whatever scale you'd like, is that they expect consistency in a circle and a square and geometry to be correct dimensionally. This is fact. If a robot can do that, the only hindrance then is the end user's ability to come up with creative ways to sell those products. Now, of course, these guys want you to believe that no one's selling anything. Of course not. That's why if you look at YouTube, that's all we see is guys selling files that you can go to craft shows and other bullshit shows and try to make millions of dollars. Unfortunately, the truth is very few succeed. And the one thing that they all have in common is what? Using the term hobbyist incorrectly. 99.9% .9 of all users in the U.S. producing any components with these machines on a consistent basis will inherently try to sell them in terms of survival. If we can replace a nine to five, why in the hell wouldn't you? And I don't care if you're in the U.S. or international, this is the fact. And 99.9% .9 as stated, will be using a machine of this caliber and this size constraint to do just that. That's fact. Now, I have another question because as this rant goes on, these questions are going to get deeper. If Lincoln Electric 
and Hypotherm, the two leaders in the industry in this technology, aren't using these boards for their larger scale machines because they're so accurate and they can do everything that is required stably. Why wouldn't they be using this board to massively increase their ROI? Doesn't make sense. Mr. JD, maybe you can explain it. I mean, what would I know? I've only worked with the chief information technology officer at NASA Dridden. Fact, it's on my channel. I've worked with Boeing, I've worked with Works Holsters, and I've worked with Hesperos Biotechnology. We call out this real slick power supply that's almost the exact same dimension as the 20 by 40 tube. So it bolts on and gives a nice clean look. So I want everybody watching this to now go out to your garage, go out to have down in your basement, anywhere you have appliances, kitchen. And I want you to look and see how many of your appliances or tools for that matter are using power supplies that are wired direct, meaning there is no plug or, or any type of insertion device where once again, we actually have a cable fully assembled that's properly insulated that plugs directly into the back of the unit. You don't find this, right? It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, if all these corporations could save so much money just doing it this way, why don't they do it? And then I have clowns that'll come to me and say, well, you know, you're being too technical. This is a hobbyist, hobbyist machine. So let me get this straight. Budget doesn't matter as long as we can get the price ultra low screw safety, right? That's what you're saying. It doesn't matter that a plasma cutter a torch is being held by this unit and it doesn't matter that it's going to be used in a shop environment even though once again it's small scale think about what you're seeing manipulation here. this is terrifying as well as PWM i will put on control. screen one of my now, systems on using an iec also, proper port GX6 that A3 once again pin. it is if a male port because we'll see the prongs there and the female cable which is fully a, assembled uh, once again by a factory system. that's properly grounded properly insulated plugs directly into the back this is terrifying what you see here we once again are watching ultra 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 low budget type assemblies without any thought whatsoever for safety in an effort to keep costs down for the total cost of the project it was important to find plasma cutters to attach to the machine at a reasonable price we found two plasma cutters one's under 170 dollars the other's under 140 dollars that seemed to work very well with this machine we wouldn't recommend putting them on one of our other machines but for this machine they work very well this one's really great he's found two plasma cutters one as low as 140 dollars and i like he openly explains on his other machines he wouldn't use it but this machine he uses it on now guys all plasma systems are not created equally keep in mind the lower the price is the quality of the system is definitely going to be reflected this is an area you do not want to cut corners in and if you think that these systems are properly going to have all of the emi mitigation that's required for cnc robotics you're sadly mistaken and this once again is proven none other than ai once again in reflecting just the price of these cutters and expecting to get a system of high quality now of course i'm not telling you, you have to go thousands and thousands of dollars but what you do have to do is look at a reasonable point of entry and be realistic with what you're investing in well guys this is the very first cut with the jd's garage uh mini it turned out really really nice uh we are using a brand new plasma cutter that we haven't used before we just did some test cuts on it uh, we're not sure of the settings and the speed we can see that we got a little bit of a too long of a pierce delay on here we're getting a little bit of a a hole there on these straight lines you know on a circle with a lead in you don't run into that but when it's a straight line you need you need to get your pierce delays a little closer you just learned a number one rule as being a YouTube content creator in the CNC genre, and that is never underestimate the power of B-roll footage. Forget about learning the new plasma settings and speeds that you're trying to market that's under 200 bucks. As long as I can show the machine cuts and get your eyes on that $35 set of plans, I did my job. Here's the truth, and maybe you may not want to hear this. I say this, and it's a logical question. 
JD, you've produced many tables. I don't know what revision we're up to. It really doesn't matter. I'll always hear from people after I do videos like this that once again have tried your tables. Here's the logical question. If these are such viable kits, plans, whatever you're selling, why don't you sell the whole unit? You'll make a hell of a lot more money. And we all know these tables are sized such that shipping them wouldn't be a big deal. So if you stand behind what you're selling and you're able to produce, you know, mass quantities of these tables and they're cutting, you know, perfectly for hobbyists, makes logical sense, don't it? You guys be the judge.